In this video, we're going to talk about molecules to metabolism. And within this topic, we're really looking at molecular biology. And molecular biology explains how the living processes in terms of chemical reactions, what chemicals, what organic compounds um, are being used for life to exist, what's happening at a molecular level. And this is uh, 2.1, so it's an introduction for our, our unit. Um, and throughout this unit, we'll take a look at a number of different things, including, including carbohydrates, lipids, um, and a little bit more in molecular biology. So to start out with, uh, one of the most common elements that we see in all types of uh, organic compounds is carbon. And what's unique about carbon is its ability to form four bonds. And you probably remember from chemistry, this could be ionic or covalent bonds, uh, generally covalent bonds. But the ability of carbon, each carbon atom, to form four different bonds, kind of like four different handshakes here, uh, allows for a wide variety of different shapes um, and different structures to be made. And so because of this ability, rings or chains basically of any length can be created. You can have chains of carbons, you can have branches of carbons, rings of carbon, um, and then other things connected to these carbon atoms. And so because of this ability, carbon um, is, is, can create all these different shapes and uh, allows for lots of different structures. Um, some different types of carbon compounds that we have is carbohydrates, which is composed of carbon hydrogen and oxygen atoms, and are, are sugars, uh, they're generally used as sugars, lipids or fats, uh, proteins, and nucleic acids. These are the four macromolecules that make up the molecules that are necessary for life. And in this unit, we're going to look at carbohydrates and lipids, and our next unit, we'll look at proteins and more specifically enzymes and nucleic acids. We will talk about more when we get into DNA and RNA. Now, within molecular biology, there's a couple of different subtopics, and the first is metabolism. You've probably heard this before, but this is essentially a connection or a web of reactions in a cell or an organism. And an example of that is aerobic respiration. This is a number of reactions that occur together um, in a series of small steps. And, and this process of metabolism is, you can think of it as a pathway that converts one type of molecule into another. It generally does occur in the cytoplasm of a cell. It can be extremely complex with lots of different steps. Aerobic respiration has a bunch of different steps in it, and there are a number of different other reactions that have quite a few steps. And some examples would include cellular respiration and also photosynthesis. Anabolism is a synthesis of complex molecules from simpler molecules by condensation reactions. And we'll talk about condensation reactions a little bit more in following videos. Um, but this is the removal or re, um, the, the taking out of water. Some examples of this include protein synthesis using ribos ribosomes, DNA synthesis, photosynthesis, as seen in our diagram here, and some synthesis of complex carbohydrates. In order for this to occur, for these larger molecules to be, uh, to be built from smaller molecules, water is being removed by condensation reactions. The opposite of this is catabolism, which is the breakdown of complex molecules into more simpler molecules. So anabolism is the building of complex molecules. Catabolism is the breakdown. When this occurs, it releases energy. It can be achieved by hydrolysis, which is the opposite of condensation. Hydrolysis is adding water to break these molecules down. And some examples would, be, would include like digestion of food in the mouth, cell respiration, and decomposition by decomposers. Included in molecular biology, and an example of molecular biology, is the synthesis of urea. Urea is a compound that contains nitrogen. Uh, it's a component of, of urine. Here's an image, the molecular formula of nitrogen. And it is produced when there's excess amino acids, which contain nitrogen in the body. And they are released or removed by uh, or through urine. And urea is produced um, by enzymes and then transported uh, via the bloodstream to the kidneys to be filtered and passed out of the body through the urine system. What is molecular about this or what is unique about this is urea was for a long time thought to only be able to be produced um, by a living organism. And this 
being called, uh, this is called a vital principle, essentially that plants or animals can, uh, only can produce uh, this molecular compound, urea in this case. In the 1820s, urea was actually s synthesized or made by a scientist using silver isocyanate and ammonium chloride and no plants or animals were used. So this kind of disproved the fact that molecular compounds could only be produced by living organisms. And so now it's produced artificially uh, by mixing ammonium and carbon dioxide and this urea is often used um, in nitrogen um, uh, fertilizer for crops. These next couple of images show some examples of uh, some different molecules that you will either need to be able to identify or be able to draw. And one of the first ones that you need to be able to draw is glucose. And that's this molecule right here. And glucose is a monosaccharide. It's a single sugar, as we'll talk about in our next couple videos. And so this is an example of a ring. You can see these points here where there, although there is no letter, or these lines connect as representing a carbon. So there's an oxygen bonded to a carbon atom right here, which then has a carbon, two hydrogens, and an oxygen and a hydrogen attached to it. Carbon attached right here has an OH and a hydrogen attached. Carbon is an OH and an H. Carbon, OH, and an H. Carbon, OH, and an H. If there's an absence of anything being shown here, um, that means that it's a carbon atom with two hydrogens attached. In, the, in this case, one, two, three, four here, there's carbons and OHs and Hs attached to it. And so you'll need to be able to recognize and also draw this, and we'll have some practice of this in class as well. The next molecule that you'll need to be able to draw is ribose, and this is the sugar that is found in RNA. It is a one, two, three, four, five carbon sugar, so it's a little bit different. Um, and those are labeled here, one, two, three, four, five. And it's very similar to glucose, but it's missing a carbon, so you'll need to be able to draw and recognize this as well. Here's a simple amino acid. It has an amino group, carbon, and a carboxyl group. We'll talk about amino acids and proteins more in our following units, uh, in our next units, um, but this is a basic structure that you'll need to be able to draw and recognize. And the last one is an example of a lipid. Um, and so this is a fatty acetal that is saturated, meaning it has a full saturation of hydrogen ions. Unsaturated occurs when there's at least one double bond, um, and so there's less hydrogen here as a result. We can also see monounsaturated, which would be this case, and polyunsaturated, which would be multiple double bonds. And we'll also look at that more in our lipids video. That's a quick introduction to molecular biology. We'll look at carbohydrates and lipids more in detail uh, in the next couple of videos.